All right, welcome, welcome. Um, I'm Deej. I'm an embodied therapist. I have you know, a fairly busy practice here in Brisbane. I see clients. I offer professional supervision. And one of the main things I do is run professional trainings for somatic sex educators and embodied counsellors. And my real passion in life since I stumbled across it is is learning skills for myself and supporting other people in, in developing skills so that we can be more fully present through the body, so that we can live more choiceful, connected and, and vibrant lives. <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm Uma and I am a somatic sex educator and a tantra teacher. And I see uh, individuals and people in relationships here in my practice in Brisbane and throughout Australia sometimes. I also teach groups um, with Deej, with my teaching partner Deej. And what our focus has been in the last few years is teaching um, practitioners, uh, specifically their certificate in sexological bodywork and this is where this, this training, the growing in embodiment concept came from. We were teaching a training in Australia, I believe a few years back, and we had all these great future practitioners there and we thought to ourselves, wouldn't it be amazing to be in a space where there were all these incredible practitioners that you could receive sessions from um, and do group work with and do processing work with and have lots of lovely, yummy things around you. Uh, and so we created this retreat. Uh, it, it was, we birthed it then and we thought about a retreat that we would like to be participants on. So we kind of created our dream retreat and um, we've run it in Australia and it was incredible. And we didn't just think, oh, okay, let's bring a whole bunch of practitioners and, and, and do session work. We thought, who else would be really great on, you know, in, in, in this environment? And we couldn't think of anybody better than Betty Martin. So. <laughs> I wanted to go to a retreat. I wanted to go to a retreat that <laughs> Betty was facilitating. <laughs> <laughs> so Betty, would you like to introduce yourself? To sure, her? thank you. Um, I too am, have a private practice in coaching touch and sex and intimacy. And basically I help people learn how to have more fun in their bodies and in their skin. Um, I'm also training other practitioners. Uh, I do a four day training in lots of places around the world and uh, offer supervision for practitioners as well. And it's the, it's the other practitioners where my heart really is these days. I'm really so enjoying that. And so when Deej and Uma called me and said, hey, you want to come to Brisbane for this uh, retreat? I said, of course. That's really <laughs> <laughs> so that was a few years ago, and that's why we're looking at doing another one here soon in the UK. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Um, so in our retreats and in our group work, we don't like to stand and lecture a lot. We like to go into doing. Um, so we wanted to give you um, a little sense of embodiment in, in, this, in our time, in the hour that we have. Um, and some of you here are really experienced and others might not be very experienced. Um, and um, I'd like to invite each of you to be with whatever is presenting for you right now. There is no right way to feel, there's no wrong way to feel. Um, some of you might be feeling lots and lots of different things. Others might be feeling things that feel like nothing or I like to call the nothing very, very subtle thing. Um, <laughs> allow it, allow it, feel for whatever's there. Don't have an agenda around how it's meant to be or how you're imagining it to be. Just stay with what is, this is, you know, your invitation. 
Um, embodiment work is all about having a go. It's just about trying it out, trying different things, being experiential, uh, being experimental, uh, engaging your curiosity rather than having a particular agenda. Okay, so let's experiment and be curious. Um, and as I said earlier, feeling for is one way we do that. It's a hugely important way and a, huge, and a really simple way that we do that. So again, like you get, get a sense of your, your feet on the floor and get a sense of the bony structures of your pelvis, particularly your sit bones. Because I, the reason I, 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 use, I like to bring my awareness to my sit bones is because I can get it, once I, once I feel for them, I can get a real sense of, of, of the gravity's effect on my body and that it does connect me down um, to the planet. And um, yeah, I need some grounding sometimes. So. <laughs> um, all right, so feel for your feet on the floor and your sit bones. And remembering that feeling for me, it doesn't mean you have to actually feel it. It's the feeling for that's useful. So I'd like to shift your focus to feel for your heartbeat. Whether or not you can actually feel your heart beating in the left side of your chest, it's useful to feel for it. And I'd like you to shift your focus to feel down into your gut and another rhythm there, the rhythm of your digestion, of your intestinal needs. And again, it's not important that you actually feel the rhythm of your intestines in this moment. The usefulness is in feeling for it. And notice when your awareness goes somewhere else and let that happen and then bring your focus back to being curious about feeling for the rhythm of the movement of your intestines in your gut right now. And shift your focus up to your lungs and another rhythm, yeah, literal the rhythm movement of your lungs expanding <laughs> and contracting to the rhythm of your breath. And letting go of any intention to do anything and just leaving your, in your awareness move around through your body. Be curious about what you're feeling through your body right now. And as Uma said earlier, allow yourself to feel exactly what you are feeling. So if what you're feeling is not much or very little, allow that to be as it is. If it's pleasant or unpleasant, it doesn't matter. What is is allow yourself to be feeling exactly what you are feeling. <sighs> So why might we do something like that? Why might we, we spend some time choosing to place our awareness in different places in the body? So your awareness is somewhere at, at all times. And a lot of the time in modern life, it's in our thinking processes, we might be running stories, we might be busily looking at our devices and having our focus there. But we can also choose to shift our focus to being in the body and a simple way to do that is feeling for so we felt for the heartbeat felt for the rhythm in the gut we felt for the rhythm of the breath and a, there's a revolution happening in psychology and, and sexology and a big part of it is is the development of technology and, and things like the fmri machine so human beings have learned 90% of what we know about our brains and nervous systems in the last 20 years. Wow. So that's a giant leap forward in information. And one thing we now know is that when we spend time regularly practicing placing our awareness, so intentionally placing our awareness, it doesn't really matter how we do that. So it could be feeling for your heartbeat. It could be feeling for your breath. It could be any one of, of hundreds or thousands of, of meditative embodiment or meditation or embodiment practices that, that are around. But it's the, the 
choosing to place your awareness in something that is happening in the present moment. When we do that, we develop more neurons, more brain stuff in this part of the brain in the mid prefrontal neocortex. So by, by feeling for your heartbeat, feeling for your breath, feeling for movement through your body, tending to clear your mind, whatever your, your practice is to bring, bring your awareness into the present moment, you get more brain stuff right here. And this part of the brain governs um, a lot of our sort of higher capacity to be and to connect. So this part of the brain governs things like uh, fear modulation. So ability to experience fear and not, not be overwhelmed by it. Um, empathy, yeah, capacity to, to have a sense of, of what other human beings are exper experiencing. Attuned communication, so to really connect and, and sink in. And another, another piece is coming out with it through the, I'm a bit of a techno geek when it comes to embodiment. And another piece that's coming out about the tuned communication is that when human beings are really communicating and really in sync with each other, if you measure their brain patterns at that time, they actually match. Yes, yeah? so when we're in a tuned communication, our brains are literally syncing with each other. Developing more brain stuff here develops your capacity for body regulation, which is a big partner in what we're doing with, the, with um, embodiment work. So the capacity to, to down-regulate or, or add relaxation to the body, the capacity to up-regulate and add um, excitement and charge to the body. So you've got more choice in, in, in how you are in the body. So let's take another moment then. Because it's also quite important sometimes to explain the science because the mind needs to come on board quite often for the, <laughs> for the body to agree or the whole body-mind system to agree to be present. So let's just take another moment to, to feel for the movement of your breath. Each. Ah, yeah. Ah, so intentionally placing our awareness develops embodiment. Another way for us to develop our embodiment is to work with the body, from the body. Uh, and so it's, we have this incredible bodies that move and breathe and sound and experience all our senses, including touch. And it's a great way when we activate all these things in our body, uh, awareness goes there automatically. So let's play with that a little bit. Place your hands somewhere on your body, it could be on your chest, it could be on your legs, it could be on your belly, it doesn't really matter where and, and allow them to move if they want to and start gently tapping your skin, tapping your body and let's start breathing a little bit faster so the breath is a bit faster but still deep, ah, so it might sound like this. Ah, ah. Ah, so we're tapping and we're breathing and notice, especially if you're tapping on your chest and your belly, how the vibration feels. And that sound as well. Everybody's mute, so we can't ah. hear you sound. Ah. 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 So we're tapping and we're sounding and we're breathing relatively quickly. That's it. I think you can shake your body a little bit as you're breathing. You can't think your way to greater embodiment, so give it a go. <laughs> Tap, shake. <laughs> Just a little while longer. <sighs> and slowing your breath down, letting your hands drop to the sides of your body, bringing your awareness inwards closing your eyes if that supports you and just notice what's there mm. breathing all the way down to your belly allowing it to expand as you breathe in 
and fall back down as you breathe out. Notice what's there without anything needing or not needing to be there right now. And bringing your awareness outwards again. Let's try another breath combined with a movement. Feel for your pelvic floor muscles. These are the muscles that surround your anus and your genitals. And intend to slightly squeeze and release them. And it might just be an intention right now. You might be able to feel them and squeeze and release. You might not know exactly where they are. It doesn't really matter. It's an intention. It's bringing our awareness to that area. And let's connect this intentional movement with a breath. And this is a very flowing, easy, but still fast breath. There's not much of a sound to it, but we breathe in and out through the mouth. Our jaw is relaxed. Our mouth is kind of a little bit round. And I'm gonna show you the rhythm with my hands. So we're going in and out. Easy in, easy out. When you breathe in, slightly, like, slightly clench on your pelvic floor muscles. When you breathe out, let them go and relax. Gentle clenching, gentle relaxing. One more breath. Letting your breath be slow. Slower, allowing whatever breath comes naturally to you right now to be there. Letting the muscles around your pelvis relax. And notice what you're feeling right now. Again, without anything needing to be there. And gently, mindfully bringing uh, awareness back out, opening your eyes if they were closed. <sighs> Why did we do what we just did? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> We can really play with our body's neurological system through our breath. A breath that is fast, that has uh, an emphasis on an inhalation, upregulates the body, activates the sympathetic nervous system, the one that's in charge of excitement in our body. A breath that has an emphasis on an exhale, where the exhale is really long and slow, activates the parasympathetic nervous system, the one that's in charge of relaxation in our body. When we intentionally start playing with breath and we put these different breaths close together, we're literally you know, turning on these nervous system in our bodies and we're turning them on in lots of different combinations and lots of different ways and what happens is that first of all we're creating newness we're creating new experiences in our body and like uh, daniel siegel uh, writes about neurons when they fire together they wire together when we create new experiences in our body uh, a neurological system fires in different ways and creates pathways, new pathways. These new pathways allowing, are allowing us to feel new things. And in the beginning, when we do something that is new, it doesn't feel like much at all. It feels it's, it's very subtle. And as we keep doing it, we're allowing the, those pathways to expand. We're inviting more sensation into our body. We can feel literally feel more, we're creating new habits, we're creating new ways. And it's, and, and, and it's a never ending process. We, we could keep doing that for the rest of our lives, really. Uh, so we had a little play uh, with our nervous system right now. And I'd like to invite Betty to um, 
I just want to briefly yeah, answer yes, Emma's yeah. original question. At the end, yeah, when we um, it, it's fun and it feels a bit orgasmic. So it was really oh, yeah. pleasant, isn't it? <laughs> Speeding. That's a good enough reason. <laughs> I think what I what I hear you saying, Uma, and what I've thought about before is that we know that when we get excited about something, either something that we like getting excited about or something that we don't like getting excited about, like fear or something, that our breath um, naturally changes. And so our breath will follow what it is that we're doing and what it is that we're feeling. And I think what we're playing in here is it's the other way around also. So you get excited, you get happy, you get scared, whatever you get, your breath's going to change. Uh, but also you change your breath and then you will t uh, be able to access those excited states and also those slow, relaxed states as well by changing your breath. That's what you're saying, yes? Uh -huh. Yeah. Cool. That's, that's really interesting hearing that. Um, the part about the nervous system too, that we're turning on this part and then we're turning on this part and we're turning on this part. And um, one thing that I learned recently was that the sympathetic nervous system, which is the excitement part and the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the relaxed sort of digestive systems part tend to, they, they tend to block each other out. So you tend to be this way or this way at any moment but when you can get both of them firing at the same time that's when you get these sort of bliss states that kind of mm -hmm. go on and on mm -hmm. so i i i would imagine i don't know much about the science of it but i would imagine that you um uh that you can access that as well so i call it a relaxed state of arousal absolutely <laughs> there are few things more fun than that <laughs> <laughs> and when people arrive to that state for the first time it's just so beautiful because we only know arousal or relaxed and when we yeah. can get there, and yeah. we can get there with the breath it's right. so simple yeah you just, you can, we can always almost always get there with the breath it's just so magical yeah beautiful mm. yeah Cool. Well, uh, is it my turn to offer something? <laughs> well, this is, uh, this, uh, it, it, um, this comes from nowhere. It's just something that's fun to do. And that is to take your fingernails and scratch your head and see what you notice about how good it feels. I mean, it's the simplest, silliest thing. And also oh. play with getting right down the midline of your head and see what you notice there and see just it just feels good um and as part of that you might also want to tug on your ears in kin educational kinesiology they call this ear tugging um thinking caps because it does wake up your ability to be attentive so, and they teach, you can just do whatever you like, but they also teach this sort of systematic way of sticking your thumb in the center and then pulling sort of out from there and then going all the way around the circle. Also, it makes you look kind of ridiculous on this little video <laughs> bonus. <laughs> Elephant-like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And what I notice is it often will make me yawn which is a, a release of the physiological tension in there. Yeah, so scratching. And this is something that I will often do when I'm working and sitting and writing and thinking a lot. I often take these breaks, yeah. And then you can take your fingernails and start down your neck as well. Ah, oh, my yeah. favorite things. <laughs> I'd be curious to hear if people would would be willing to um, put on their chat what they're noticing now. We've taken some adventures. We've taken the um, upregulating breath. We've taken the relaxing breath. We've checked in with our digestion and our breathing. 
our sits bones and our pelvic floors and our heads and ears. So that's a lot. Tell us what you're noticing. <laughs> My kids used to love for me to do that also. I wake my daughter up like that in the morning. Yeah. With this thing. That's what she asks for. Yeah. 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 Excellent. I think the I think the main thing that's that's sort of the theme here is that we get to choose. We get to choose when we want to feel up and more zingy and more awake, and when we want to settle ourselves down as well. Um, it's always a choice. Yeah. Well, right. to some degree, it's always a choice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we've, we've got about, um, you know, about 15 minutes left, 20 minutes, and uh, the three of us are all embodiment teachers, but we're also sex teachers. So let's talk about sex and embodiment. Oh, good. And what we want you to do is if you, could, if you just feel into any questions at all that you'd like um, one of us, all of us to respond to, and if you could pop them into the chat box, we're just going to choose two or three or however many we've got time for that we feel might, might speak to more of the group, yeah? So if it's a more specific question, we'll probably won't choose that one. <laughs> if it's a question that's probably going to give information to a number of people, we might choose that one, right? So if you could just feel into some questions and, and, and pop them into the chat box there. So there's a question there, how to integrate some of this mindfulness and these techniques with, with partners. Um, so I tend to go for the word embodiment rather than the mindfulness. The, the, the psych sort of community tends to prefer the word mindfulness. I feel that embodiment is sort of the mindfulness of the body. Yeah? It's, a, it's, it's not just placement of awareness. It's, it's using placement of awareness and breath and movement and vibration and, and touch to be, to be present. So those are great things you can do with, with a partner. Yeah, you can... Um, Practice different ways to breathe together, follow each other's breath. You can move together. You could take, maybe follow each other's movement or take turns leading and, and, and following movement. Using some of the things, tap, tapping, vibration. What, what's also coming out lately, um, I think it's from the polyvagal stuff of Stephen Porges, is that when, <coughs> when human beings get into rhythm together, um, it calms the amygdala. So the amygdala is a part of the brain which, which is on alert for whether there's danger present or, there, or there's no danger present. So when we get into rhythm together, so when we breathe together, when we drum together, when we chant together, when we dance together, it allows our nervous systems to feel connected to all these other nervous systems and allows the amygdala to calm down in a way that it's unlikely to calm down by itself. So it gives the potential the joy to come out. And that's why very often when we're in groups and we're chanting or dancing, joy and bliss comes out. So if you're with a partner, find a way to get into rhythm together. Breathe, tap, move, drum, whatever way you can get into rhythm together will, um, will be useful and hopefully fun. <laughs> I, I do want to acknowledge that sometimes, uh, when I've been with partners, particularly in the past, it can seem really awkward to take this sort of, okay, well, hey, let's do this breathing thing because it's this whole new thing and it doesn't sound really sexy or romantic or something. So it, it, um, if you have a, a partner or a friend or relationship in which you have an interest in actually experimenting and exploring who we are together, and not everybody has that. But if you do have that and you put it in that context, it's a lot easier and can, it, it, it can make it easier to actually try something new because you've already got this context of, hey, let's experiment and see what happens. Um, because you come to any, any of it, any of the embodiment with an intention of to experiment, then there's no, there's no, you don't fail or succeed. You succeed because you find out something. We don't know what you're going to find out, but that's the nature of an experiment. And that's actually one of the, the major learnings, I think, in shifting from other types of education to embodied. Mm -hmm. is to, to get into that place where, where everything's allowed and it's yeah. just an experiment. It's the curiosity itself that's useful. Yeah. 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 And somebody else posted here, dance. That's absolutely, that would grab me. 
although not everybody would. So it looks like there's a longer. Um, yeah, that's not, can, well, this one, which one check? There's, I'll just briefly choose to talk to the lo longer one. I mean, that's a very specific question. We're trying to get more general questions here. And especially state by state, country by country, that is so different. So for, that's yeah, about the, the security. So well. I would suggest a supervision session yeah. and, and supervision yeah. session with Betty because she's in the United yes. States. She yeah. might be able to speak to that one um, yeah, more bet. effectively than I can because our legal situation in Australia very and in the different. UK is very different from the one yeah. you've got in the United States. There's also um, on my website, you'll see that I offer a group supervision that's very affordable and you basically share the time so go have a look yeah beautiful okay there's a question under that about what can participants on the retreat to expect to receive from certified sex logical body workers Ooh, that's ah. a good one <laughs> answer that one <laughs> so the retreat is a combination of lots of different styles of work so we have a group Basis classes. So sexological body workers on the retreat teach classes in different um, in different things, uh, breath or movement or touch. We teach classes as well. Um, we're sexological body workers, so you know all of us teach. Uh, there are also individual one-on-one -on -one sessions between uh, each participant receives a session a day. Session yeah, day, at almost least a session. At least, no, at least a session. Um, with, uh, with a sexological body worker that they work with uh, over a few days. So there's a continuous uh, stream of the work and then you work out your particular learning objective with your sexological body worker and this is the work that you're doing with them. So, yeah, so it's, where's that place of, of newness? Yeah, where's the possibility for learning for you as an individual? That's what your practitioner is going to help you work out so you can be working on what, what's most useful for you and that's why that's why we we got really excited about the idea of a retreat where there's not only group work but one-on-one -on -one sessions mm. and then we also have time for the participants to be together with one of the facilitators and process what's been uh, going what, what's been coming up for them or or ask any questions or just talk about sex because we like <laughs> So much um, uh, and we also have a lot of time for for, for yummy things um, like foot bathing and sensation rituals and all sorts of really lovely um, embodied yummy experiences yeah I want to say that it's not you know you might think of going to a workshop as oh boy I'm gonna work on my stuff and I'm gonna like be in this big intense thing and you can do that if you want, um, but there. But at these retreat, there's a lot of yumminess and sweetness that surprisingly can take you to quite deep and transformative places. Mm. Yeah, mm. yeah. So, and that was sort of us working as out on our sympathetic, parasympathetic, because we were coming out of quite an intense training and we thought wouldn't it be beautiful to do this with lots of space and <laughs> nurturing and time and not have to really go up to your edges if you didn't want to but actually just to be really held and supported it's a all right embodiment came yeah. out of that idea yeah. <laughs> and if you're if, uh, uh, uma just described having sessions with sexological body workers there and if you're not familiar with what those sessions entail there's a variety of things including um, coaching, some touch, some witnessing, some listening. Uh, so the possibilities to have within your actual private session is quite broad. <clears throat> yeah. So any more questions that people want to jot down? Yeah, yeah but I just, just want to invite some more questions. So just be feeling into what, what, what you could ask. We can't see you, so we won't actually know it's you if we don't know you. I know we get to dance as well. There's a dance question there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, there's another question there. How are certified sexological body workers and participants paired? So um, participants fill in a, a, a little client profile before coming at, um, to the retreat. Um, uh, the facilitators sit down and look at what we know about the practitioners and, and um, what we know about the clients and look for what feels to be the most uh, useful pairing there. So, so the facilitators 
make a call on that. There's some discussion if there needs to be. Um, and, and you don't stay with the same sexological body worker all the way through. So we really wanted to get, thought it was useful to give you um, the opportunity and experience of, of, of different styles of working. So you, you, you won't be with just the same pr you practitioner. Have about you, prob two practitioner. you probably have about two practitioners. And it's fairly flexible. When he just said facilitators, he means Uma and me and him. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Can you give me an idea about what a touching yeah. session with a sexological body worker would be? What would coaching session be like? Oh, you want me to take that one? Yeah. Yeah. Um, coaching is one of those words that has, it, it's a very broad meaning of what can actually happen. Um, so an example might be helping you learn how to ask for what you want or by practicing it or helping you find what part is what kinds of touch are most relaxing for you helping you find what parts of your body help you relax what parts of your body excite you or helping you learn how to uh relax your pelvic floor or um uh witnessing you being with you while you touch yourself as a way to um experiment with being seen and not hiding in the shame of it um in the sexological body work protocol the whole body is potentially available to be touched if the client wants it um but it's not a substitute for it's not a a sexual experience or a sexual service <clears throat> you're not going to get laid or have a hand job <laughs> It's, it's in service very definitely of what is your learning goal and what would be most useful for you. Yeah. Not that we think getting laid or having hand jobs are bad things. It's we a just fabulous thing. <laughs> <laughs> not what we can offer. <laughs> um, um, add something to that? Perfect. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and if people don't know, Betty Martin is probably the world's leading expert in teaching touch. So, yeah, so that <laughs> Betty's flavor permeates um, the work that most sexological body workers do, actually. So, yeah, some really um, incredibly practical, useful practices. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. To move forward. Yeah. Yeah. Um, question there what level of supervision will certified sexological body workers receive? Lots. There's, um, so uh, there's daily group supervision with facilitators. There's daily peer supervision with each other, and there's one on there's one on one supervision um, with facilitators also. It's a very rich time for the practitioners because they are getting kind of an immersion in being able to give lots of sessions really close to each other. I mean, close, you know, right after the other, and a lot of supervision, more than you'd probably get normally. Um, so there's a lot of learning happening for the practitioners, and it's very good support for the participants to have their practitioners be on it and on it and on it and learning and learning. Mm -hmm. And so you're working, really one -on -one, working one on one to a team, really. Yeah, yeah. You can even connect it to a team through that yeah. one on one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You also get supervision and guidance around uh, your group teaching. So as a, a certified sexological body worker, you will teach a class and then there's feedback from the facilitators about the class and looking at uh, really honing your craft. Yeah. So it also means that as the participant, you're getting kind of a a taste sampler of a lot of different experiences in classes. So one of the, the practitioners may teach something about movement and some may teach something about dance and some may teach something about touch and some else may teach somebody think about consent or, so you're getting this sort of smorgasbord of lots of different things that you, um, that you become more aware of for yourself and also that you can say, oh, I want more of that when I get home. Um, so the the group classes are really great in that way yeah all right so we've just got a couple of minutes left the other piece there dolly with your question is that that there's a lot of 
lots and lots of input in the days before we meet meet there and lots of input through throughout and just being in that community space is an incredibly lush place of, of learning and literally grown in embodiment the last time we did this every single person there including myself it was it was really extraordinary that the leap for the leap forward that i felt in my mm -hmm. own experience of, of mm -hmm. You weren't even receiving sessions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought, you know, when, when Deej first told me the name of Growing in Embodiment, I thought, well, that's a pretty pedestrian name. But it turned out it was very true. It was very accurate description because mm -hmm. um, everybody came out of there with just a, a huge leap in a personal awareness and joy of it. So... It, so I, you were right, Bees. That's exactly what it was. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we're closing in just a little bit, but let's um, let's come back to some breath and let's do um, let's do a reset breath and. Should we people to turn their camera Yeah. So you, yeah, you might choose to turn your camera on right right now. So it's just and um, we're going to do a reset breath. This is um, a breath I got from Reginald Ray. And so if you can bring your awareness to your breath. <sighs> You're gonna take a really slow breath in and a really slow, slow, slow exhale, like the slowest exhale that you can achieve. So that was just to get started. And we're gonna do it this time. So slow breath in, slow, slow, slow exhale. And then hit out the last of that breath. Really empty your lungs and then pause at the end of your exhale. So pause on empty lungs. And then let the breath come back of its own accord. And long, slow exhale. Kissing out the last of that breath. To pause on empty lungs. Pause, pause, let the breath come back by itself. And one more, long, slow exhale. Mm. <sighs> now at the end of your breath. Pausing for a moment there and then just letting the breath do whatever it wants to do. And be curious about what you're feeling through mm. your body. Right now. <sighs> And maybe as a way of closing, I wonder if we unmute. It's going to be really chaotic and noisy, but that's okay. And does everybody perhaps just shouting out one word about what you're uh, going through? And your body. And it comes, it's just the vibration we want. So allow the cat, allow it to be noisy. No, we don't have to hear each other. Clip. You, you are know? all unconnected. What are you noticing through your body right now? Relaxation. Freely. Happiness. 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 Joy. Chaos. <laughs> Integration. Mm. Well, let's take one more breath on all of that. Lovely to meet you Thank all. Thank you so, so <laughs> Thank much. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.